Mrs. Lowe, councillor and deputy chair, or are you deputy chair of the local government elected members association? That's not Walga. No, not well done. It's definitely not well. Done. Definitely thanks, not well done. Simon. Um, thanks, Simon, for organising us all, and thanks all for coming. Now, I'd like to um, acknowledge the traditional owners of the land first, and I'd like to ask anyone if they want to stand up, turn around once, and sit down because you've been sitting there for a long time. Does anyone need to shake, say hello to their neighbour, or whatever? And I know it's getting a bit long. Um, I'd like to talk to you about the big picture tonight. Um, about me, as a nurse and mother, I obtained a law degree at UWA and I was awarded the Planning Law Prize. I then worked as a lawyer in Environment Planning, Administrative and Mental Health Law, and believe me, I needed the later just recently, well, especially when I listened to all of this. Um, I've worked as a local government planning and development director, and I've also worked as a local government elected member. I'm currently working as a volunteer, just about full time, for the local government elected members association. And any community group to join us as, as associate member, and uh, and I'd urge any elected member to join us because it's amazing how little we know about even as elected members how it should work and how it's supposed to work. And I'd like to just note to the Ocean Reef people that we before about the business plan it was me that did alert them through uh, mentoring that there should have been a business plan before they signed up the MOU. So it's about knowing the rules. Um, and I'd like to let you know that Ojima has, like local government elected members association, also referred to as Ojima, we made a submission to the federal government parliamentary inquiry about property developer donations. And I'm very proud, it's the first time I've ever been asked to actually give evidence to them because I'm probably one of the few submitters that connected developer donations and third party appeal rights absent thereof. So, um, so that's, that's, the, that's the entree. I'd just like to rebut a few things that were said. The only integrity audit we need is third party appeal rights. That's the integrity audit that we need. Having another meeting or an audit isn't going to help. And just about infill, as one of my heartfelt things is infill. And infill is attractive to the property developers when the land hasn't yet been zoned or planned for infill because they buy it cheaply. And once you plan and zone for infill, then they don't want it because they can't make the profit because the land value goes up. And in the ACT, where they don't have local government and you can't own your land, you can only lease your land, and you have to pay percentage of your profits back to the local government's far better system. And there are ways around, there are always ways to fix things up. And a lot of other states have done the fixing or are doing the fixing. And, um, and I also want to apologise to Jorn for interrupting him, but it's my utter frustration after 20 years of campaigning for third party appeal rights and knowing all of the writings of Justice Trenorden and every other um, argument against third party appeal rights that I've heard it's just not true and there's, and there's no evidence for. Now to the substance. There's a lack of integrity in government decision making brought us to WA Inc. It seems to me that WA is right in the middle of a yet unrecognised WA Mark II. WA is a place where mates appear to have greater influence than merits in profitable development subdivision and zoning decisions. Some property de developers occupy positions of significant influence through political donations, which wrongly are not prohibited in WA and are either prohibited, prohibited or capped in Queensland, New South Wales and Victoria. Donations do appear to influence development, subdivision and zoning outcomes. And the other thing we must realise, they influence how the laws are made. As, and talking about um, structure plans just earlier, it's a few years back, they stopped making structure plans. They said structure plans are no longer blinding, binding on de developers. They're just a guide. So they, they stop them even making any difference. And that will be the influence of developers influencing legislative outcomes. There is no more heinous law in Western Australia than one that says a decision maker, being the first party, can give a development, sorry, subdivision or zoning approval to an applicant being the applicant and the decision maker being the second, uh, the applicant being the second party, which ignores all existing planning policy 
and against which there is no right of merits review triggered in any personal government body. So the JDAP makes the decision, even the local government can't appeal against it. And which same law says that a brave decision maker who refuses a development or subdivision application does trigger a right of review for the applicant property developer against the merits of the refusal. And the same law which says that the brave decision maker who properly conditions an approval triggers a right of review of the property developer against the merits of the conditions. The rights of appeal against the merits of a development approval and or conditions are called third party appeal rights because everyone else other than the applicant and the decision maker are third parties. And that's why they're called third party appeal rights. Could be a local government, could be a neighbour, could be a community group. So if you glaze when you hear the term third party appeal rights, hopefully you actually know what they are now and why they're called that. We are the only state without TPARs. The only state. Sorry? No, no. The rule of law in a democracy says that all citizens should have equal access to the law. We don't. In WA. Unlike property developers, we the people, merely third parties, do not have any rights of merits review against an approval, with the awful repercussions that we see growing up all around us now. Many active community groups are properly motivated to action against unmeritorious proposed development, as many of you are who are here tonight. Sadly, as long as we all stay in our own silos fighting, a fair, fighting for a fair, well-planned outcome about our place, we play into the hands of the property developers who seek to subvert the ideal of good planning, guiding the exercise of development, decision, discretion. Now let me just stop there a minute. If you're talking about a development, call it development. If you're talking about planning, call it planning. But don't talk about a planning approval, talk about a development approval. Planning and development are two totally different things, right? And please remember that. So they label us people here as anti-development NIMBYs, wrong, or rabid greenies, wrong. <laughs> <laughs> well, except for one, like, yeah, one. Or, or they complain about excessive red tape and delays and approvals. Wrong. It's been shown and demonstrated that if you have third party appeal rights, the approval process is sped up, not slowed down. They keep us, David developers, keep us busy arguing fruitlessly about planning merits. So you see, I want to go on for the policy. Look. The abalone are there, and the this is there, and the that's there, and we run around. It doesn't work like that in Western Australia. A waste of time. The reality, so often, it's about mates and political influence. Speaking of which, if you don't have this Bible, buy it. It's called The Game of Mates, How Flav Favours Bleed the Nation. Written by a social, economist, social, social person and an economist about Australia and the grey corruption that flourishes, of which the absence of third party appeal rights is one. And um, what else was that? So, for 30 years, I've worked with groups fighting for particular developments. What I believe is this it is not about who the decision maker is, although JDAPs are dreadful. It is about the absence of approval review rights being third party appeal rights. None of the research supports any of the off trotted out arguments against third party appeal rights. I, we have a third party appeal petition, I'm not sure if we printed it out, but if you don't, you can write to me and get a copy of it. Please get people to sign, as well as doing your own actions, please sign a petition to the upper house for third party appeal rights so we can show that a lot of people do want them. Unlike Walga, the Department of Local Government, everyone else says we don't. Stand for the local government at the next election with TPARs is on your agenda. The Labor, Liberal and National Parties do not support TPARs. They have never supported them. Do not vote for any state election candidate who does not support third party appeal rights. It is a shocking admission because I'm a nurse and I was a lawyer, or well, was a nurse, intensive care nurse. I'm a mother and a grandmother and I put the anti-vaxxers ahead of those two parties. 
the anti-vaxxers ahead of those three parties. I can't believe I did it, but I did it. Because <laughs> I decided I'd rather have an anti-vaxxer in the upper house than anyone that wouldn't support the party of feel right? Sorry, I can't believe I did that. Anyway, um, Without third party appeal rights, there is little point in mounting arguments about the merits or otherwise of a development or rezoning proposal.